Hi everybody and a warm welcome back to Maple Leaf Customs. I'm Andrew and on the bench today is a 1 to 65 scale Tomica Toyota Crown. This one was gifted to me by my good online friend Ricky from iRefix Diecast. It's my first Tomica, so I've even created a new playlist for this occasion. This one's a taxi, as you can see, and I'm going to keep the theme, but give it a new look in what I understand to be authentic Japanese style. Got your coffee ready? Settle in for this and some upcoming specials. Next weekend is a buddy build with Dan from the Chop Shop and on National Red Line Day, it's a Rolls Royce. Car's been all taken apart and stripped down and it's a pretty basic lineup of parts that you see on the bench. And of course I have to begin with the paint stripping process. And in this case, paint stripping gel one, Tomica Zero. In today's community, shout out and invite you to make a trip over to visit Don at Diecast Flashback. Don's in the bluegrass state of Kentucky in the USA, and I promise you're going to enjoy his channel. I'd like you to go by and show him some love with a sub and leave a kind comment behind, and he would appreciate that very much, as would I. As you watch me take care of the perfunctory steps of bare metal detail and chassis polishing, a little history for you. The Tommy Corporation was founded in 1924 in Tokyo and in 1970 started production of die-cast vehicles. Originally, the name Pocket Cars was given to Tomicas that were sold in the 70s in the United States. In 2010, Tommy Corporation started using the Tomica name. Initially, they only produced Japanese brand cars and trucks. The variety of models expanded from the original run of coupes and sedans to taxis, buses, trucks, construction and other commercial vehicles. Even a steam engine and an ocean liner were offered. I wonder if you've got a Tomica in your collection. I'm getting it all primed up in preparation for a rather intricate three color paint scheme based on this actual Tokyo taxi cab scene right here. And I wasn't exactly sure how to go about it, but I decided to begin with yellow as the base coat. And before I do any masking on top of paint, I always do a clear coat and let that set up, which ensures that when it's unmasked, it's not gonna lift off any of this original paint. I use the Tamiya Hobby masking tape, which I've always been very happy with. There's a couple of different widths. And now I apply the top coat of green. Full length airbrushing from front to back, like you see me do here. And I let that set up for about 20 minutes before I attempt the teeth gritting unmasking. Looking good so far. It looks perfect. All right, that came out great. More clear coat on top of the green, more masking, because you'll see in the picture, there's just a white stripe that runs from the bow to the stern here. I laid a little primer down on top of the green and the yellow in that bare spot. And then with a spray can, I put the white on top. More nerve wracking, unmasking, but you know, I'm having a good day. <laughs> It's coming out great. No bleeding, no overspray at all. So I leave this for another night. You know, this hobby ought to be called watching paint dry. And I'll shoot some clear on it tomorrow when I get up. In the meantime, I do a wheel swap and these are the originals and they really weren't all that bad, but I take care to measure to see that they're 10 millimeter in size. And I'm going with these monoblock wheels that I've had kicking around for a while now. And I don't want to get too fancy pants on you here. It's just chrome, but a nice spoke pattern. 
and these are the monoblock axles. They're very soft and so it's quite easy to just crimp the end and you'll see you don't even notice that crimped end when I put these on. Measure to length, I snip off the other side and be careful to make note of the order. Put the second wheel on before you crimp the end off or you won't get the wheel on. And these rubber tires are spinning freely and they just go in under that Tomica suspension spring. And I repeat the same with the back. Super nice little bit of suspension play in there and off it goes. The red interior was not going to do with this new color scheme so it gets white as does the original taxi sign. Just a white touch up on the outside edges. I did not dare to try to go around the taxi lettering. It looked pretty good. This is my regular brand of plastic polish. The German brand called Sonax. They do all kinds of car products. And on the original front grille that was plain chrome, I do a little bit with some flat white to put some headlights in there. Those came out well. And now for the Japanese taxi decals. Lucky for you, I speak perfect Japanese. <laughs> no, I don't. But I can cut, copy, and paste Japanese. So I just took a screenshot of that original picture and made those as micro small as my printer could go. And I placed them on one at a time and positioned them with a toothpick. flip it over and I'll repeat on the other side. I always put a channel logo on the bottom of the chassis if there's a good looking spot for it. In this case, yes. More clear coat, more drying and curing and we're ready to put this back together in the reverse order that it came apart in. And because I make sure to do a couple of dry fits at the beginning of the process I know that it's going to snap back together just perfectly. In goes the front grille. And today I'm going to glue this back together. I do have screws here but you'll notice I cut the threads off and I just have the screw heads which gives a little bit more for the glue to adhere to and for cosmetic reasons it fills up the hole in the chassis. That sets up very quickly and with the ubiquitous toothpick I touch those up with some chrome paint to match the chassis. The taxi sign goes back in beautifully and here's the last move are these minute side view mirrors. Notice in the picture they're not at the edge of the windshield they're at the front of the hood. Maybe that's a Japanese move, I don't know. But I followed suit. It's all done and we can zoom in now on all the details that I did. Most important change is the paint job to match the authentic Japanese taxi cab style. Tail lights are detailed out, the side view mirrors in the front beautifully flitched up chassis and I like those monoblock wheels on this particular casting. Doors are still functional as they should be, no problems there. And I think you'll agree that's a nice replica of an authentic taxi cab. It was pretty well loved and looked like it had been chewed by the dog originally could be 50 years old and now it is in pristine condition once again. I think it looks really terrific. I'm definitely pleased with this one and it shows off well in a little garage diorama. I invite you to leave your respectful comments below and tell me what you think of the Toyota Crown Taxi Cab. Tell me where you're watching from because I'm interested to know. 
This will not go to the Goodwill store because of the breakable parts that could be swallowed, but I've got a couple of adult collector friends who would be happy to put this on one of their shelves. I want to thank you for visiting my channel today, and I sure hope you'll come back soon and often. It's coffee time.